All right, everybody, I'm back. And this time we're gonna be taking a look at the packaging for Peer Solar for the Sega Genesis. Now this video is um, a secondary video to the Paprium unboxing and first impressions. So I'll be doing a little bit of comparison between the two packaging. One came out, I'd say about 10 years ago or so, about 2010-ish. Um, and then of course Paprium just came out uh, December of 2020. So here we go, let's take a look. All right, so the main packaging here, and yeah, I actually kept all of the main packaging for Pure Solar, which is, I mean, I moved, I think twice since I got this, so it's been a bit, but yeah, so the main packaging, it's got all the custom stuff, my, you know, all the addressing and stuff on there. Let me go ahead and take this out. And to be honest with you, I haven't actually looked at this in a while, so I'm gonna take it out of the packaging and what came with it was a, oh, this is a non-disclosure agreement that I signed because um, with a little bit of background with Pierce Solar, I actually uh, was involved a little bit with the beta testing of it and my name's in the credits, which is kind of cool. But yeah, I found out of the project uh, right when they made their website and I was able to be a uh, investor in the project. So I ended up investing to the point where uh, I didn't invest a whole, I mean, it was like for the game and I think it was the, what they call the posterity edition or posterity version of the game. But I also uh, was able to get into beta testing and it's, it was really fun. It was really cool to do that. So um, just a <laughs> printed out signed version of the non-disclosure agreement for that. Let's see. Oh yeah, the USA Classic Edition. Um, six years of hard work has passed. Please see enclosed with this letter your copy, your game copy. Thanks to the countless hours spent by nearly 100 volunteers around the world, we finally did it. I'd like to thank everyone who participated in the project so much, from the development team to the translators. And finally, the beta testers. A mega blaster kiss to Tulio for his hard work since the very beginning and his outstanding patience with me. And uh, yeah, this is from Fonzie. This was actually a letter from Fonzie. Um, not going to show the whole top half because it's got, you know, uh, address and stuff. But um, yeah, so it's got the watermelon logo on the top. It's kind of hard to see here. Yeah, whatever. It's got the watermelon logo on the top, and the you know what's done is done. And they basically said that, um, sorry, you know, about the delay, because even then, for this game, there was a, a delay. <laughs> it took six years to bring out. Uh, the Japanese language has been removed as we could not find anyone with the skills to proofread and translate work. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hand sign, all that good stuff. Cool. So, a little bit of a, a contrast from the uh, letter that came with uh, Paprium. <laughs> But yeah, so anyways, go to the uh, the actual packaging. Um, it came like this. So I got the the US edition, um, the Sega Genesis version, because they had the European Mega Drive version and the Japanese Mega Drive version of the game, which again, it was just more for looks, not compatibility. They all worked across any region. So you take that off, that little back cover off, and if you saw my other video, um, you can see that this clamshell is very, very similar. Um, it's got a watermelon watermark right here. Yeah, kind of a little embossed there with a sealed sticker right here. Yeah, so very similar clamshell to that. And I'll show you kind of a side by side in a moment. But so when you open it up, very nice quality game uh, box, which is really neat. I mean, it just oozes detail. It's got the you know the the signature uh, you know game serial right there. On the back, it's got some uh, some shiny shiny print pictures. There we go. Yeah. And yeah, you know, 64 meg high capacity cartridge compatible with six button 
joypads, one player gain with two player bonuses. It's got a little Sega CD enhanced soundtrack. For those of you that did not know, the game actually works with a Sega CD uh, disc where the soundtrack, you put in um, the CD in the uh, Sega CD and as you're playing it'll pull the music from the Sega CD soundtrack. So anyways, um, yeah, there's like a little goodies tab, but it's all in all a like a sealed cardboard type box, Sega CD compatible on the top there. All right, so you open it up and it's got the instruction manual basically attached to the inside cover, the inside sleeve there. And in the top there is the Sega CD slash Mega CD uh, music disc. Used with Mega CD system, compatible with PC and Mac for additional content. Enhanced soundtrack disc. Funny enough with this one, so this disc came on there, it says can't come, um, this disc contains a hi-fi PCM soundtrack, ambient 3D sound, insert into a connected Sega CD unit to enable the enhanced soundtrack. And there's a little bit of, you know, box art behind that, which is really, really nicely done. I mean, the packaging, in my opinion, is, <laughs> is really top notch for what they did. Um, but funny enough, with the Sega CD soundtrack, there were certain early models of the Sega CD, which uh, in my case, I have a uh, Sega CD Model 1. And it actually, it was having errors playing back. Uh, I think it was skipping a bit or wouldn't work properly. So they actually released a uh, an ISO uh, back in the day. Again, I, I haven't read into this in a while, which is basically a... Um, a disc that you burn and it actually reads at the proper slower speed that the original Sega CD uh, soundtrack could uh, could could work at. So yeah, this disc actually doesn't really work too well in my Sega CD. I have a burned disc that um, it works the same way though. But you have the game manual, full color game manual. Um, you know, special thanks in there, all the good stuff. Very, very, really, really well done. All the packaging tells you exactly what you need to know about the game, the different items, inventory list. I'm going backwards here, by the way. Basic options. Tells you a little bit about the enhanced CD. Index and all that good stuff. Uh, Posterity edition, I was like, hey, thanks for all the people that, uh, you know, gave their money to this project so that it could be uh, made into a reality, even though it did take six years. Um, that was kind of the nice thing about this game was the trust. You know, you, you actually dedicated time to, to actually, you know, going on the forums and contributing and, and whatnot. And, you know, it did take six years to take out, to, to come out. But, you know, the trust that was built after that, because this was the final product. This was the, the game cartridge and the box and everything that came with it. Uh, it, it really kind of springboarded their whole uh, magical game factory, uh, which, as we know, um, you know, time time went on and projects came and went. So, anyways, so this is the cartridge that came out. You know, I got the little print design there, and yep. So this is the cartridge here, and yeah, it's a standard um, Sega Genesis cartridge. Got the watermelon logo on the back caution do not expose this to water all the good stuff uh, yeah and actually again i kept pretty much everything him the the cartridge came in like a little little sealed wrapper here seal of uh, quality uh, certificate of authenticity i think it's kind of stuck in the back there um yeah let's come on out basically it's it's telling you okay this is a legit copy um you know it's signed and and numbered this is number 557 out of 800 i believe 800 was the total number of posterity editions whether it was genesis or mega mega drive but uh yeah it says date 11 2010 so it was the end of 2010 Q qc was was checked and i think it shipped right after yeah all right, and then from there, again, I haven't opened this part 
for years. But it says goodies. There's some goodies in the back there. Just gonna be careful opening this up not to flex it too much. Kind of like those style Genesis games where the, it comes with the cardboard box and not the clamshell. They got some stuff tucked in there. Okay. So it comes with a manual for um, other languages like uh, Japanese, French, all the good stuff. Pretty good. I mean, it's a black and white manual. You open it up like that, and it's just the same content that was in the inside cover. It has a uh, fake ad for a Sega 32X game, <laughs> Thunder Drive 3. Never actually existed, but it was kind of fun, you know, as if. It was a real Genesis game back in the day, and there was a game coming out. Some Pierce Solar stickers. I really wanted to stick around, but I didn't. And an A Pierce Solar poster, which I'm definitely going to have to get framed. But let's see. Celebrating the Sega Mega Drive Genesis 20th anniversary, blast processing since 1988. So really, really neat poster. So yeah, that's that's pretty much how they decided to package this game. They wanted to have like a clamshell style for the US Genesis edition of the posterity. I know future prints, I'm not even gonna try to get that in there right now. Future prints, um, had a little bit more strip stripped back. I believe it was more like a clamshell style uh, case for that, but that's what the posterity edition of Pierce Solar looked like when it came in about early 2011. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in there. I hate putting this stuff back in. I'm gonna try to do it on video. Don't wanna bend anything. There we go, slide it all back in there. Yeah, so to give you a little bit of an idea of some of the differences or similarities, this is the Pure Solar Genesis Edition cartridge. And this is the Paprium Edition that I got in. So it's very similar design. Um, this has got the 80 meg high density cartridge. This one says 64 meg, but beyond the label differences, obviously there's some color differences that, that um, they have, I believe, purple and like a pink um, edition for Paprium that got released. I think it was depending on which version of the game you got, Mega Drive European, Mega Drive Japanese, or uh, Sega Genesis US. But the top there, you know, a little bit different. Um, design. It's got the extra mega wire port right there on Paprium. But otherwise, I mean, it looks like it came from a similar die or a similar uh, casting. I'm, I'm pretty sure they didn't want to go through and redesign everything because it's got the same watermelon logo in the back there. Let me center that. Same watermelon logo right there. Same warning, caution. I don't see any differences. Let's see. No, it's, they both say high density cartridge right there and right there. And they got the ridges right there. Um, no, this is pretty much the same thing, except they use the different, different color. They use different color variations. Neat. Well, to kind of show the differences to the outer packaging on this one, um, this is a little bit more substantial for Paprium. So, that's the box that it came in uh, versus the little packaging that this came in. And this actually came in a big, the, the Paprium, let me see. Paprium came in a big mega investor and in, uh, investors mega pack right there. Um, so what was interesting about this one is this came with a, a bunch of extras that were a little bit too big. Like you open it up and it says, thank you. So they spent, I think, a bit more time and money in the Investor Edition of Paprium versus uh, Pure Solar, which is fine. I mean, that's it's their second major release. I know they had they they you know bankrolled 
think uh, uh, a different a different game but that was developed by a different company but this is their second um, developed release with again it kind of came with just big you know a big behind the scenes book with it it's got a again I haven't even opened this part but it comes with like a manga uh, postcards it's got uh, a letter that's a little bit different in tone um, <laughs> a little bit different tone than the pure solar one most likely because the pure solar one was printed the, the the time it difference it took to finish pure solar um, and print the, the thank you letter and put it in there was probably a little bit less time versus paprium this one they, I think they finished most of the, the the box and the materials and stuff back couple years ago and then they printed this out as like a this is what's changed this is what's different this is kind of um, the you know thank you and this is why it's it's in the state um, so it took a little bit extra time but they definitely added a few more goodies like um, the Dattenmeister pin I know some people got um, I think again with the Mega Drive version they got different pin but the most interesting differences well again it came with a couple extra like an instruction manual right there and uh, a, <laughs> a prepackaged uh, thong oh, which is still pretty interesting but the main difference is beyond the goodies beyond the extra because the extras are a bit more substantial with the investor edition but kind of the neat thing is if you kind of look up well I put it back incorrectly Kind of the interesting thing between the two releases is they use the same design for the clamshell. I mean, it looks like a uh, new sticker on the top, the new seal, but the same basic design, which is really cool, especially if you're a collector um, or you want to, you know, keep investing with paprium or with watermelon, I should say, keep investing with watermelon. Um, the, it's got the same high quality box art. The same high quality packaging for the actual game. Now what's interesting with Paprium is this release, the Genesis release, had more of like a loose, more elaborately designed, I would say, um, game casing where this kind of all folds out for the instruction manual and the goodies that come in there um, versus the, you know, the, the more normal cardboard sleeve based release of Pure Solar. So they kind of went a little bit safer, a little bit, I mean, granted, the actual quality material is really great on the original Pure Solar release, but they went a little bit more ambitious with this release. And I'm like, you know what? We're just gonna design this all and make it super different. But I do really appreciate the uh, continuity between the two releases, honestly, you know. Uh, being a big fan of the Sega Genesis, you know, I know a lot of people that would probably ditch the packaging, but for me, I like to, you know, this is this is a piece of Genesis history. It really is, you know, and to have both of these kind of in a collection is really great. And it's going to be, it's kind of expensive to find this online anymore. I know on eBay, last time I checked, it was like 300 something dollars and most of them are sealed, um, which people that have opened it and played it, you know, they generally don't sell this, but um, you see a few of them bumping around, and I can only imagine what this is going for right now. But, um, in my opinion, are they both really good games to get? I think they're great. Pierce Solar had some difficulty issues with it, some unevenness, but there are other releases. Like, there's a, a you can buy it on Steam, you can buy it on Xbox, PlayStation. You can buy it on uh, Dreamcast as well, which is really cool. Um which is like an updated version. So Genesis release, I think is more for collectors at this point for Paprium right now. I did the uh, other video for the first impressions and unboxing. So go check that out. If you'd like to see a little bit more about that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to take a moment and talk about the comparisons between Pure Solar and Paprium releases and, you know, kind of a, a timeline of how they got from here to how they got to here, you know, and, a little bit more on that is just again you know 
with the success of Pierce Larn and they, you know, they got a couple extra members of the team and you know, they expanded upon the graphics, so they did the Dreamcast release and did the digital releases and they're like, hey, we got a good thing going here. And again, there's a lot of videos out there that are way better at explaining the history, so I'm not even gonna go into it, but between that, they got pretty ambitious and they had two different projects going, um, one for a Sega Genesis game and one for a Super Nintendo game, which there hasn't really been much traction on that, and we'll probably hear more about that later, I hope. Um, but anyways, this one came to fruition with a lot of time and money. And I remember when that first came, the project was first started, they're like, okay, what platform do you want? They actually had people who were investing in it actually vote on what platform they wanted on. More people wanted it on Genesis, so they're like, all right, cool. Genesis game, what kind of game do you want? Do you want it? another RPG, do you want an you know, adventure game, beat em up, all the good stuff, sports game. I forgot the exact um, poll that they had, but um, a lot of people were like, man, we would love to see another, you know, thing to compete with or complement Streets of Rage, you know? So yeah, the poll basically completed out and it's like, hey, we want a Genesis game that was a uh, beat em up or beat em all, whatever they like to call it. And, you know, they meant to, with the, the way that the the gem system, the kind of currency, the investment currency that they had for that website went is, you know, the more you invested, the more say you had in the creation of the game. You know, you could beta test the game, you could do all this good stuff. Um, but everybody who was investor, the idea was that you could have a say in what kind of game uh, was going to come out. And this game concept and platform was a direct result from investors that actually voted on it so for me as a genesis fan i couldn't have been happier <laughs> uh, that this came out the way it did and yeah i've if you can you know get a get a hold of it if you really want to um you know get something that's like streets of rage or you know it's it's on a different level it's just there's a lot of extras there's a lot of but the gameplay is really good so i would say it's a great buy um you know, for the, the long-term game for Watermelon, um, they might have a digital edition come out eventually. Who knows? They, they <laughs> I remember when Pierce the first came out, it was like, oh man, you couldn't reproduce this game. Um, you know, you couldn't, there, there was a specialized chips and all this stuff. And, and then I don't remember if there was ever talk of digital editions or anything like that, but eventually that came out for Pierce Solar. So I would say if you really, you know, don't have a lot of money burning a hole in your pocket for this for the next wave um you know i'd probably wait on it but that being said if you wanted a genesis release for paprium and you didn't get it in in the first try the first wave from years ago um definitely i mean you might not get the exact quality because this is the investor edition but their all the releases are really high quality um from what i've seen um so yeah that's kind of my two cents on that so thank you for watching this and let me know how you know if you have pure solar if, if you were kind of an investor back in the day how you liked it if you were kind of later on if you played it later on um you know what are your thoughts on pure solar i'd really like to hear it um i might eventually get the strategy guide that they came out with uh, i'm not sure because i really want to replay this but uh, after beta testing it uh, and then the game came out like right after i actually put the game off <laughs> I didn't actually play it right away just because I had played the same levels and same s points for, for a lot a long time with the beta testing so uh, but it was fun to play out I, I want to jump back into it but if you haven't checked it out and you really want to um, yeah get the get one of the digital digital editions you know it's it's pretty fun it's not it's not like I probably wouldn't say it's it's one of the all-time best RPGs but they aim to be a similar quality to like Lunar and, uh, you know, Dragon Quest back in the day. So anyways, thank you so much and yeah, have a great day. Take care now, all right?